support at all. That's saying that there's there's nothing organic that can spring up from just the normal people that is worthwhile or good, and that it's all concocted by the controllers. And also, it's saying that people weren't able to recognize something genuine. Wait, so you're saying that the Tavik stock theory originates from one woman? One man, John what? Coleman. John Coleman, okay. Yes, which he doesn't support. He just makes this allegation with nothing to back it up. So to me, it doesn't make any sense because it makes sense that Tavistock hijacked the Beatles when they removed Paul. Mm. But then you have the Sgt. Pepper band, which is telling you, like, this isn't the Beatles anymore. And then the, it totally went in a different direction. But what I think happened is that the Beatles were genuinely talented and had oodles of charisma and wit and charm. And the controllers weren't worried about them in the beginning because they were just singing about love songs, pretty harmless. But then when they started to get political, then it was like, okay, we got to do something about these people. <laughs> now, it, it was the new Paul, it was Paul who uh, was involved with the Process Church and involved with the uh, John Burroughs, William Burroughs. Um. Well, it was the new fall that was involved with the Tavistock Institute and Illuminati and Aleister Crowley stuff. Okay, there was. Oh, so you're saying there was nothing involving Crowley until after Paul was replaced? I don't believe so. Well, what about the old Help album? Is, aren't they standing in those positions with that Crowley stuff uh, in those positions? Well, that's what people claim. Yeah, you don't think so. No. But you've heard the allegation before. I have, yeah. <laughs> okay. And what about the process stuff? Was that the first poll or the second poll? Well, I don't see that the original poll was involved in anything evil, mm. except with the caveat that the Butcher album may have been a way to expose satanic ritual sacrifice. You think so? Okay. Maybe. Now, they claim that it was... A, um, a protest against the Vietnam War. But there is the alternate interpretation that he was trying to expose satanic ritual sacrifice, which would have also been a problem for the controllers. And of course, the album was pulled right away as soon as it came out. Yeah. Well, weren't they the early Beatles, though? Weren't they rather chummy with uh, Savile, uh, Jimmy Savile? I mean, the showbiz people you know, they just met with each other and who knows what the extent of their friendship was. I don't think they were chummy. Never came upon that before. Okay. Really. I mean, a lot of this stuff is coming out later. It's like revisionist history. Okay. Now what about the women in Paul's life? Jane Asher, Linda Eastman, Heather Mills. And this talk of it's, I think it's not even talk, but Paul himself says that he and Linda Eastman never left each other's side, right? And, and it was a, a kind of a switch out between Jane Asher. They were switched to as well. Jane Asher and Linda Eastman, there was a switch there too. Like the old Paul was with Jane Asher and the new one was Linda Eastman. Is that how it went? Yes. Yeah, so there was overlap, um, which makes me think that Jane Asher, well, she knew it wasn't the same person, of course. But I don't know uh, what her role was in that. She was certainly uh, convinced to go along with the new Paul. But so she was together with Paul from, you know, like 63, 64. And then Paul disappears middle to the end of 66. Then she's with Fall. Of course, Fall is a lot taller. Mm -hmm. She never really looks happy with him. But then. In 69, there was a party. Well, it was their engagement party, according to Jay Marks. Uh, he said that he went to the party. He asked another reporter why was Paul with Linda Eastman instead of with his fiance Jane Asher. And the reporter told him, oh, that's the different Paul. That's not the same Paul. So, and then... Uh, and then Paul will fall, marries Linda Eastman. So 
And then Jane Astro refuses to ever talk about Paul McCartney after that. And her books are all about, um, you know, crushed love affairs and women with secrets to hide. <laughs> so, you know, is maybe she still alive today? Telling. I'm sorry. Is she still alive today? Jane Asher, yes, she is. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay, yes. and um, it wasn't there a photo too around that time on a boat of the two poles on the boat, or, or has that been the discredited? That's been the debunked. I I debunked it. Yes. Okay. It's it seems to be a Photoshop. I mean, it's it's from a book from 1968, but it doesn't mean it wasn't photoshopped. But there is somebody who's claiming to be the second Paul on there. Oh, really? Uh, his name is like Adnan something, but I have it on my my blog. But um, I mean, Paul was was not there at that point. I mean, he's not around anymore at that point, in my opinion. Now, what, what's Linda Eastman's background? Do we know Eastman Kodak? Is that where she's from? Oh no, it's not. It's not Eastman Kodak. It, it was um, actually her real last name is Epstein, but um, her father was a lawyer in New York and had a considerable fortune. So when Linda died, she left Fall about two hundred million dollars. Um, Wait, Linda Eastman had two hundred million dollars? Yeah, that's what his inheritance was. Get the hell out of here. You know, Yoko Ono had a, had a billion dollars too, man, before she met John. What the hell is it with these people? Man? Well, What's going on? you know, Yoko, I really think that she was an Illuminati plant. Oh, yeah. You know, she she came from basically banking royalty in Japan. Hirohito. She was related to Hirohito. Yeah, she <laughs> went to school for royalty. Yeah. She came from a rich banking family. So she comes over. She just happens to meet. Paul McCartney just happens to meet John Lennon. Well, she didn't meet the, meet the real Paul, but, you know, after mm. Paul was replaced. So she just goes to his house and meets him and then just meets John Lennon. Like, it's so easy to meet the Beatles, right? Like, <laughs> but then her art, too, is promoted. But I think that her art was promoted as part of the, well, ca culture, accounts, I'm sorry, the counter, culture, Council for Cultural Freedom, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so there was a CIA program to degrade art. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, that she was part of that, or possibly. Anyway, needs more research. But, you know, she comes in the scene and, um, you know, the, the Beatles help promote her and she's just... You know, I don't know. Just to me, she seems like a plant or a handler or oh, something. Yeah, absolutely involved in all kind of witchcraft. I've had people on the show who know her firsthand. We had May Peng on the show. I had A.J. Weberman who know, knew both John Lennon and, and uh, uh, Yoko and hung out at their apartment many, you know, hours and hours. Uh, everyone says she was a witch. Uh, and also involved in hypnotism. May Peng talks about how he went over there to quit smoking and comes back. And, you know, he's all hypnotized. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. There's also a weird connection, too, between Jane Asher's brother, uh, who was the manager for James Taylor, who James Taylor ran into Mark David Chapman the weekend he shot John Lennon. Uh, what what a bizarre coincidences over and over and over with this bunch. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the John Lennon assassination is very suspicious. The official story doesn't add up. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, okay, the boat we took care of. And now, now Heather Mills is another one who comes out of the stable, prostitution uh, stable of Adnan Khashoggi, CIA money launderer, drug smuggler, richest man in the world at one point, uh, lifestyles of the rich and famous. And he, he's, the, he's the only woman that he's ever admitted, yes, she was a, she was a prostitute and she worked for me as a prostitute. Uh, no other woman he ever says that about, that he ever admits using prostitution and human trafficking, sex trafficking in his business deals. Uh, but Heather Mills somehow comes out of that and hooks up with Paul McCartney. And when they show him the, the, the tabloid article, you could tell on his face he was shocked that he didn't know about any of this. Now, what, what can you enlighten us about that whole situation? Well, Heather met, married Paul, and she probably didn't know that it was not the original Paul because in 2007, she came out on the media, mainstream media, saying, you know why I've left you, protect me, and I'll say nothing. Something so awful happened, and people don't want to know the truth. It's so terrible. And she was getting death threats, and she put evidence in a box and gave it to somebody in case they topped her off. So in case she were killed, 
this the truth would come out. And she said, there's so much fear of the truth coming out by a certain party. So, I mean, who could possibly be? So it seems like she found out what happened in freight. And I have to say that she has um, integrity for not going along with it. Now, it would have been nice if she'd revealed what she knew, but I think she was scared and she had a daughter she had to protect. So, but she came very close to revealing what she knew, but um, unfortunately she didn't. So, she has a daughter lesson. with Fall? Yes, Beatrice. And, and who came up with the name Fall? Well, it was already a term in use when I started researching this, so I don't know. It didn't, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, um... Uh, George Harrison. Uh, th that word came out of his mouth at one point, no? Uh, actually, you know what? There, there are instances of the Beatles recordings, I think in the 67 Christmas show, where they said fall. Hmm. So it might have even stemmed from them. And actually, I did read that John Lennon called him faux Paul. Hmm. And I haven't been able to find that again, but I remember reading that um a long time ago, faux Paul. And I, and I didn't understand it at the time because I didn't know what had happened. So, <laughs> and, and what do you make about when John said, here's another clue for your role, uh, the world was, was Paul. What do you make of that? Well, you know, that song came out in 1968, so it was before. Oh, really? Good, it was a year before the whole hullabaloo about Paul is Dead that came out in 69. So that's what I'm saying. It's like they were dropping clues on purpose before. Well, you know, yeah. Why were? Why would he say that? Like it would make sense if it had been after '69, like after everybody was talking about it, but before. Hmm. That that raises that raises a big red flag. Now, uh, have you seen the documentary film "Let It Be" about the production of the White Album? Not the new one, no. I mean, I saw the old Let It Be. Oh, there's a new one. I didn't even know there was a new one. Yeah, they were, it's like the 50, anniversary, 50 year anniversary they're releasing it. So, but there's an exchange with, um, you know, George and, and Fall, and they just didn't get along. So I talk about that in the book. Well, also, too, he says uh, that he's trying to get them to do something. And he says, I've seen you guys do it. I've seen you do it. Exactly. And, right. Yeah. And it's and yeah. you know what? And I documentary, you'd think it'd be played all the time or, or be available. And uh, it's so obscure. The only version you could find had subtitles, Japanese subtitles under the bottom or something like that, because uh, I, I looked for it for years and years. Uh, and it's like buried, you know, but and now you say there's a new version. The, is that seen in the new version? I haven't seen it yet. I'm sorry. I don't know. Awesome. I hope so. Yeah, that's something to check out, man. Now, but but also too. Now, you we've talked before. You believe that some of the other Beatles have been swapped out as well. I do, I do. But there's not the same amount of evidence from voice prints, from forensic scientists. And there are not the same, you know, reverse speech or back masking clues. So that for me. Um, I have done some research into John Lennon, but I need to do more research, and, and it might be the subject of a forthcoming book. But um, we'll we'll see. I'm kind of putting that on the back burner. And, and the the idea of public figures have using body doubles. What is the history of that? Do we, it, it's it's happened before, right? There's a long history, actually, since the Middle Ages. Oh, really? To use doubles for psyops, yes, or t twins, or... I mean, now, of course, they have well, clones, ostensibly, but holograms. Hmm. Um, you know, you, you can use doubles for innocuous reasons, such as a decoy for a politician, or more nefarious uses, like what I'm suggesting for Paul... Um, there was the idea that Kim Jong Il what would died and and he died. I mean, he's already he's admitted dead now, but before mm. there was the idea that he died in 2002, and the North Korean government was just trotting out these doubles as they needed. And there's quite a lot of evidence for that actually. And um, Saddam Hussein was another one who 
it is said that he died in 97 and they were using about seven doubles to